power, synergy, collaboration. That's how your body works. Every food that you eat matters. Every drink, every exercise, and every supplement. They all work together as allies, creating a powerful team inside your body to make you healthier and live longer. Especially if you take a tiny teeny supplement called resveratrol, popularized by Dr. David Sinclair, you're taking one of the most synergetic supplements on this planet. Did you know that resveratrol interacts with other supplements that you take? With other foods that you eat? This mysterious molecule targets different mechanisms depending on what you eat, what you drink, and which supplement you take with it. What should you do? You'll discover how resveratrol interacts with olive oil, avocado, green tea, and red wine, and with many supplements such as NMN, NR, collagen, glycine, NAC, and much, much more. Now, let's cover a critical topic that nobody speaks about that is going to help you to form a lifelong habits of good health and longevity right now. Welcome to the Wellness Messiah podcast. I'm your host, Rimon. So far, we only focused on resveratrol alone, and that doesn't do us justice neither to resveratrol, because it doesn't give us all the access to all resveratrol's power. Now, we'll go food by food and discover how each one interacts with resveratrol. Let's begin with olive oil and see what Dr. David Sinclair says about it. What this paper showed was that the byproducts of the what we call lipolysis, the breakdown of fat when you're when you're hungry, produces monounsaturated fatty acids, the kind that you can get from olive oil. Right. Those molecules circulating in the blood are about a thousand times more potent than resveratrol at mm -hmm. activating this longevity enzyme. Dr. David Sinclair said that the breakdown of olive oil is a thousand times stronger than resveratrol. And this suggests that maybe eating olive oil is better than taking resveratrol supplement. Is this true? So what I did, I went to the study and read the entire 24 pages. One of the most fascinating studies I've seen on olive oil and how the type of fat in olive oil in avocado works. And they mainly showed that when you burn olive oil, you don't need resveratrol as it does the same thing. I'm quoting, this effect was not additive to resveratrol, suggesting that 18-1 means the fat in olive oil and resveratrol may activate cert one through a common binding site. And what they show there in this excellent study is that when your body uses olive oil or the fat in avocado for energy, when you fast, when we exercise, you indeed activate CERT1, similar to resveratrol. And it seems that when you fast, when you don't eat olive oil and avocado oil, they cover the basis of resveratrol in the times that you don't take resveratrol. When eating meals, resveratrol activates CERT1. When we fast or exercise, when we don't want to take resveratrol, as we said in episode 3, then olive oil, the burning of this oil, is going to do the exact job. What does it mean? If you ate yesterday olive oil and you did intermittent fasting today or exercise today, you burn this fat, then you're going to get similar activation as if you took resveratrol, not while eating it. When you eat it, what makes more difference in your longevity has to do with the polyphenol content, not the fat content. This we're going to touch in a minute. As you can see, this is a complementary effect. This supports exactly what we discovered in episode 3. The best time to take resveratrol is with meals. Now, in this study, did they compare head-to-head -head resveratrol with olive oil? Well, in this study, they mainly checked the chemical reaction of olive oil and resveratrol on CERT 2 and 1. And the mechanisms, how they activate CERT 1. So the study doesn't answer the question, which is better, which is more powerful. Do we have a study in humans that compares longevity activation by olive oil versus resveratrol? I could not find a direct head-to-head -head study. However, I have an idea. Tell me if you agree. Do we have foods and diets that are high in those nutrients in resveratrol and olive oil and are highly researched in humans? Let's think about it. Red wine. Red wine is highly researched in humans. And in episode 1, we have seen that red wine is a good model for low-dose resveratrol. Another model that is highly researched in humans is the Mediterranean diet. The Mediterranean diet, per medical research definition, is a diet that is high in olive oil. Could we find a study that compares head-to-head -head the activation of longevity mechanisms between red wine and the Mediterranean diet? Yes, we have such a study. And it will allow us to discover what happens when you compare low-dose resveratrol versus olive oil. 
Now, before we go to the study, this is important to understand from a longevity perspective. If we want to live longer, we need to activate all the longevity mechanisms, all the secrets that are integrated within our body's system as much as possible for as long as possible. One such a mechanism is the sirtuins. The sirtuins are enzymes that silence aging genes, and they also involve in maintaining our health as we age and also repair our DNA. They also prevent the loss of information that Dr. David Sinclair spoke about in his theory of aging, the information theory of aging. Let's hear Dr. David Sinclair explains exactly that. The sirtuins. These are enzymes that our bodies make. There are seven of them in most of our cells. And they're very important for fighting against diseases, both chronic diabetes, heart disease, Alzheimer's, we believe, based on a lot of mouse and human uh, genetic studies. Uh, but they also, we're finding, are important for viral defenses. Well, sirtuins, particularly sirtuin 6, sirtuin 1, and sirtuin 2, they control inflammation and they dampen it when it's overactive. What's important to understand is that we have seven of these enzymes, of these sirtuins, and we want to activate all of them, not just one of them, sirtuin 1, 2, 3, and so forth. So Dr. David Sinclair found that resveratrol activates sirtuin 1. We have proven that again and again in our previous episodes. But what about sirtuin 2, sirt 2? This is exactly what the study I mentioned examined. So now this is the moment. We can go to the study and compare olive oil versus resveratrol using the Mediterranean diet and red wine. So the studies from 2014 is called Intake of Red Wine in Different Meals Modulates Oxidized LDL Level, Oxidative and Inflammatory Gene Expression in Healthy People. Now, this is important. This was done in healthy people, just like you and me. And here, they compared red wine with resveratrol as active ingredient versus the Mediterranean diet with olive oil as the active ingredient. Let's see what they found in the study. They show that red wine alone and you can see it right in the middle of the graph, does not activate sirt 2 gene. This corresponds well with Dr. David Sinclair's findings that resveratrol works on sirt one not 2. And they found very good news that the Mediterranean diet, with olive oil as the main player, activates significantly sirt 2 complementing the SIRT1 activation by resveratrol. This is a complementary effect. This is good. This is what we want. But that's not everything. What happens when the researchers combined the Mediterranean diet with red wine? Then they found something amazing. There was another spike in SIRT2 activation. You can see the spike in the graph on the right. It is 20% extra activation on top of the Mediterranean diet alone. And indeed, the researchers noted, I'm quoting, SIRT2 expression increased significantly in comparison of fasting red wine versus Mediterranean diet plus red wine. The mystery is that red wine alone doesn't spike SIRT2 at all, yet somehow when you combine it with the Mediterranean diet, then it increases its effect. How is it even possible? So this was SIRT2 activation, but this is not everything the researchers discovered. In this study, they also measure the impact of oxidized LDL cholesterol. Before I'm going to show you what they found, what is oxidized LDL and why it's important for our longevity? So today, cardiovascular disease kills about one in three people. One of the major causes of this disease is the oxidation of a molecule that carries cholesterol in the blood. This molecule is called LDL, and it's not cholesterol per se, which is the cargo within this molecule, it's really the ship that carries cholesterol within the blood. Now, when this LDL gets oxidized, it's extremely irritating to the blood vessels, and it's one of the major causes, not the only one, but one of the major ones of cardiovascular disease and the buildup of plaque in our arteries. You don't have to remember that. What is important to remember if you want to prevent cardiovascular disease, if you want to protect yourself from a disease that kills one in three people, then you don't want LDL to be oxidized. And this is exactly what they measured when they compared red wine with the Mediterranean diet. And another interesting thing they did, they also compared that to McDonald's meal. So this is going to explain more about how our diet could affect our longevity and cardiovascular disease. So what did they find? First, we can see that in McDonald's meal, how it increases the oxidation of this cholesterol carrier, the LDL. That's not good for longevity or for cardiovascular disease risk. Then they show that the Mediterranean diet reduced oxidized cholesterol. As you can see in the lower position in the graph, it went down. This is great. Similar to SIRT1, red wine did not have a significant effect. 
but when they combined red wine with low dose resveratrol with the Mediterranean diet, suddenly LDL oxidation went down even further, almost doubling the effect. How is it even possible? Well, it has to do with resveratrol's third secret. The first secret has to do with how resveratrol works and how it works differently, sometimes oppositely, in different doses. The second thing we discovered is that resveratrol has a separate antioxidant activity, which has nothing to do with its longevity activation. The third secret of resveratrol is that it's a very cooperative molecule, especially with other molecules from plants from its family, the polyphenols and the flavanols. Resveratrol and its polyphenol friends either from food or supplements, enhancing each other effect, activating new longevity mechanisms that alone resveratrol cannot access. It needs their help to make you stay young. Together, those polyphenols with resveratrol forming a powerful synergy in your body. What is synergy? The interaction or cooperation of two or more organization, substances, or other agents to produce a combined effect greater than the sum of their separate effects. Dr. David Sinclair suggesting that olive oil could be a thousand times more powerful than resveratrol. If the power was the issue, pushing more resveratrol dose would increase longevity, but it doesn't. Instead of power, what we need to truly seek is range and synergy. This means having a wide range of molecules from foods and supplements that work together and cover all this range of longevity pathways and genes. And besides this all thinking of lone supplement, I think maybe it's wrong. Maybe the key is combining resveratrol with other polyphenols in our diet, achieving more powerful anti-aging effect. And you know, many people are asking me about consuming olive oil instead of resveratrol. Why not taking both? Those polyphenols work together and may cover different longevity mechanisms. I think at this point, this seals it also about why does the Mediterranean diet work? Because their diet seemed to be not so different from other people. Believe me, I lived for one year in Cyprus, and I've seen what they're eating. They eat carbs, they eat sugar, but they do drink red wine with olive oil, and they're eating a lot of olives as well. So combining those low doses polyphenols from different plants, they achieve this powerful synergy that could activate their longevity pathways. So we spoke about olive oil. Another plant with good amount of polyphenols is avocado. And it could be that avocado also enhances resveratrol. Therefore, taking low dose resveratrol with avocado makes sense too. And it will increase resveratrol absorption as well. In addition, avocado is high in unmonosaturated fat about 68% concentration of this avocado oil. This means that you get the same benefit of olive oil, the benefit that Dr. David Sinclair spoke about when you fast and when you exercise. When you do that, your body is gonna burn avocado oil and it's going to activate sirtuin one. Also in our investigation, I showed you that red wine activates a wide range of longevity genes in humans and animals, despite having only one milligram of resveratrol per glass. How could that be even possible? Red wine on its own has a polyphenol synergy with a very low dose resveratrol. What makes red wine distinct is that all those polyphenols are produced by the same plant, red grapes. Now I want to delve into the polyphenols in red wine, so maybe we can learn how to use this powerful concoction to our longevity with resveratrol supplementation. So previously in this investigation, I've showed you that a glass of red wine has somewhere between half a milligram to one milligram of resveratrol. But this is not the whole story. Resveratrol is not the only polyphenol in red wine. Maybe these polyphenols have a synergetic effect with resveratrol. How many polyphenols we have in red wine? And what's the difference between polyphenols in red wine to white wine? This study says the total amount of polyphenols found in a glass of red wine is approximately 200 milligrams in comparison with only 30 milligrams in a glass of white wine. A glass in this study was about 200 milliliters. So it means that every 100 milliliters has 100 milligrams of polyphenols in red wine. And this also shows us that red wine is truly a polyphenol concoction with a very low dose of resveratrol. And this synergy explains the wide impact of many longevity genes in humans, despite having this extremely low levels of resveratrol. But I think we can use resveratrol supplement in low dose to enhance this concoction. 
And the beauty here is that we get this concoction where resveratrol is the main player. So if, if we take, for example, 50 milligrams of resveratrol with red wine, we have this concoction where the main character is resveratrol. Now, 100 milligrams of polyphenols from red wine that can have a synergetic effect with your resveratrol supplement are more than enough. We don't even need a full glass of red wine to gain the benefits. And remember, alcohol per se is toxic and is not responsible for the benefits, the longevity benefits that we have seen with red wine. It's only the polyphenols. This low dose is going to give us most of the longevity benefits without the consumption of excessive alcohol. Another synergy between red wine and resveratrol has to do with absorption. Red wine will increase absorption of resveratrol. And we can take a low dose resveratrol with a small glass of red wine or maybe only a half a glass of red wine and it's going to increase absorption. So we achieve both the absorption and the synergy effect with the polyphenols in red wine. In summary, low dose red wine plus low dose resveratrol supplement seem very likely to have a synergetic effect. But I'm warning of avoiding excessive red wine consumption as alcohol does not confer any longevity benefits, but it's only a toxin. But what if we only want to get the polyphenols from red wine without any alcohol? Can we do that? We're going to discover that today. So this was one way to enhance resveratrol effect. Which other foods can we take to do exactly that? Green tea has a polyphenol called catechin. Is this catechin a friend of resveratrol? Let's discover that right now. So in this study, the researchers explore what happens when you combine this green tea polyphenol catechin and resveratrol. The study is called anti-inflammatory and anti-atherogenic, meaning against cardiovascular disease, effects of catechin, caffeic acid, and transresveratrol in apolipoprotein E deficient mice. So here, the researchers took mice, removed the genes for APOE, and in essence, increased dramatically the mice exposure to cardiovascular disease, the same terrible disease that we mentioned today that all of us are vulnerable to. Then the researchers gave the mice combination of green tea polyphenol, resveratrol, and another compound called caffeic acid. Don't confuse that with caffeine. It has nothing to do with caffeine, which you can find good amounts in red wine as well. This is what they found. The supplementation with high dose of this combination significantly reduced the presence of atherosclerotic plaque by 40% and 36%. In conclusion, this combination of polyphenols significantly decreased atherosclerosis in APOEKO mice by affecting inflammatory cells recruitment what does this mean? This suggests that green tea and resveratrol work together to reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease by preventing plaque formation. But this is not everything. Another study from 2015 checked again resveratrol and green tea polyphenol. The name, investigation of the potential synergetic effect of resveratrol with other phenolic compounds. I'm quoting, in this study, the interaction between resveratrol, gallic acid, caffeic acid, catechin, again, the green tea polyphenol, and quercetin was investigated using three different antioxidant assays. This means the researchers examined different interaction between different supplements in different tests. This is what they found. The synergetic effect between catechin and resveratrol was confirmed using all three methods. So it seems again that resveratrol and green tea have a synergetic effect in all different antioxidant tests. The question is how this synergy can help us live longer and how could it affect our brains and nervous system? This study shed a bit of light on that. The name of the study, Synergetic Protection of PC12 Cells from Beta Amyloid Toxicity by resveratrol and catechins. PC12s are neuron cells and because the researchers wanted to check the synergy of resveratrol and green tea on toxic byproduct called beta amyloid that is especially toxic to our nervous system, they used PC12. So this is the model for our neurons in our bodies. Now I'm quoting from the study. Beta amyloid peptides elicit a toxic effect on neurons in vitro and in vivo. This means that beta amyloid is simply toxic in all environment for our neurons. I'm quoting. Resveratrol and catechins have a synergetic protective action. These results demonstrate that resveratrol and catechin protect these neurons from beta amyloid toxicity and that their protective effect is synergetic. Such a protective effect probably is not due to only their antioxidant activity. Now, this is very important. The researchers speculate that the activity they discovered is due to their activation of the natural defenses of our bodies. This is terrific for longevity. 
Now, the researchers found another interesting thing about resveratrol dose. Can you guess what it is? Let me quote. While the protective effect is concentration dependent for catechin, meaning the more you go up, the more protection you gain, resveratrol shows a concentration dependent biphasic effect. Up to 50 micromolar concentration, resveratrol protects neurons from beta amyloid toxicity. So when you go low to moderate dose of resveratrol, you gain all the benefits of protection. At concentration higher than this level, an inhibitory activity on cell proliferation appears. Suddenly resveratrol prevents the cells from dividing, meaning it prevents cells from growing. This is the exactly anti-cancer effect we have seen in episodes 2. Again, we can see that low-dose resveratrol give protection to cells, allow them to survive and live longer, also by preventing toxicity from beta amyloids, while higher doses have a different activity, preventing growth, and seem to be protective against growth in cancers. But the bottom line here is that drinking green tea in general, and especially in days that we take resveratrol, seems like a very good idea. And these two seems to have a consistent synergetic effect that are excellent for our longevity. But have been making a mistake when I used to drink my green tea, I'm gonna share that today, so you're gonna avoid the same mistake and gain all the benefits from drinking green tea for your longevity. When should you take high dose resveratrol? Do you remember the excellent mice study that we showed from 2008 where they put the mice on low dose of resveratrol and it activated many longevity genes? One of the things they were looking for after the mice died is to see an anti-tumor effect of low dose resveratrol. Remember, it's low resveratrol, not high resveratrol. This is a segment about tumor formation in old age. So they dissected the liver of the old mice after they died. I'm quoting, there was also no decrease in spontaneous tumors at the time of the sacrifice. In particular, spontaneous liver tumors were abundant in mice fed the controlled diet or resveratrol, but rare in caloric restriction mice. So low dose resveratrol, unlike caloric restriction, did not inhibit cancer growth. That's the greatest difference they found in this study between caloric restriction, which we know extend lifespan, to resveratrol, which we found mainly extend health span and also reduces mortality. Now, I said that low-dose resveratrol's biggest weakness is its ineffectiveness against cancer. However, high-dose resveratrol, even though not good for chronic use for longevity, has an opposite effect. It pushes cancer cells to die. Let me quote from this study. Metformin inhibits the tumor-promoting effect of low-dose resveratrol and enhances the anti-tumor activity of high-dose resveratrol by increasing its reducibility in triple-negative breast cancer. Please don't get scared by the headline of this study. Resveratrol doesn't cause cancer. They already started the study with an active tumor. They found that in an active cancer, whereas low concentration of resveratrol was not helpful, high concentration of resveratrol inhibited cell growth and induced both autophagy and apoptosis. And the study even showed a synergy between high-dose resveratrol and metformin. I'm reading from the study. Metformin, combined with resveratrol, exerts a synergetic therapeutic effect on cancer cells and effectively prevents tumor progression. When you go up in the dose, suddenly high resveratrol makes metformin more potent against cancer. Now, if you've been with me in this investigation from previous videos, this is not surprising for you as well. We have seen in our investigation that high-dose resveratrol works completely different from low-dose resveratrol. And high-dose resveratrol has a very strong anti-cancer effect, forcing cancer cells to die. In fact, today I think that high-dose resveratrol and low-dose resveratrol are completely two different supplements. If you take low-dose resveratrol and your friend takes high-dose resveratrol, you're not really taking the same supplement. What is high and what is low? This is based on your weight. The following is my translation from what I have seen from 300 studies on resveratrol. Low-dose resveratrol is half a milligrams up to 1.5 milligrams per kilo of body weight. For most people, it's somewhere around 50 to 100 milligrams per day. And high dose is 15 milligrams to 20 milligrams per kilo of body weight. For most people, it's around 1 to 2 grams per day. Then you may ask, if I take most of the time low-dose resveratrol, is there a benefit to integrating high-dose resveratrol in a specific times, maybe to increase our protection against cancer, maybe we can target specifically active cancer cells before they develop into a tumor. Practically, what this suggests, 
This suggests not synergetic effect, but a complementary effect between low dose and high dose resveratrol. Maybe we can use both doses in different times for different purposes. Exactly how can we use these two supplements as a complementary effect? That in the habit section today. The last food on our synergetic food list is berries. Berries have a pigmented skin full of polyphenols, potentially similar or cooperative with resveratrol. Another benefit of berries is that they are low in sugar. Now, these polyphenols are located in the skin of the berries, and they are highly likely to form a synergetic effect with resveratrol. Do we have studies on these? I couldn't find any study of synergetic effect between polyphenols in berries to resveratrol. But the likelihood of this synergetic effect to exist is very high. And from the research, I can tell you that the best berries for synergy with resveratrol are blueberries and blackberries because of their deep dark pigment, this dark black or dark blue, suggesting the highest concentration of polyphenols among their family, the berries family. So far, we spoke about resveratrol supplement synergy with the foods, olive oil, uh, possibly avocado, and of course, red wine. What about the synergy between resveratrol and other supplements? NMN, NR, collagen, glycine, and NAC. So this is exactly what we are going to cover now. Previously, we spoke about a synergetic effect between resveratrol to other polyphenols from plants, but we can support resveratrol action too from other direction, including covering its weaknesses. This will create another aspect of synergy that could help us preserve our youthfulness and live longer with resveratrol. One such a direction is boosting NAD levels. Now, Dr. David Sinclair takes NMN as an NAD booster with resveratrol. Would NMN and resveratrol form a synergetic effect? Here is the case for synergy here. Resveratrol activates stress enzymes. One such an enzyme is CERT1. This is the one that Dr. David Sinclair researched. And resveratrol makes CERT1 works faster, but CERT1 to work efficiently needs a fuel called NAD, and resveratrol won't provide that fuel to this enzyme. In other words, resveratrol increases the consumption of NAD by making sirtuins work faster, but resveratrol won't supply NAD on its own. So we want to boost NAD. And then there are three supplements that boost NAD. These are NR, niacin, and of course, and amen. When we combine both of these in Dr. David Sinclair's own words, resveratrol is the accelerator and NAD booster such as NMN is the gas. Uh, the way to think of these molecules is that they are the gas pedal for the, the sirtuins that we work on. So sirtuins are defensive enzymes against aging. The, the NAD is the fuel, uh, the gas in the tank, and the resveratrol is the accelerator pedal. And they both work on the same system, on the same proteins that defend the body. So that's why I think the combination might be helpful. This means that if we combine resveratrol with some NAD boosters such as NMN, NR, and even niacin, we could support resveratrol activity on CERT1 and create a powerful synergy for preserving our youthfulness. There are two questions I received a lot. Should you take resveratrol and NMN, NR, or niacin together? No. Combining NMN and resveratrol doesn't mean that we have to take them at the same time to form a synergy. NMN will boost the overall NAD levels of your body, not just on this exact minute. Therefore, here, combining them means that we have both of these supplements in our supplement routine. Another question, my patrons from patreon.com ask me in our forum whether taking NMN will require a higher dose of resveratrol, higher than the low dose that we have seen in this investigation. The opposite of this is true. What do I mean? Taking resveratrol means that we have more sirtuin activation. This means that we need more fuel for these sirtuins. This means possibly that your body can consume more NAD from the supplements, such as NMN or NR, but not vice versa. You don't increase sirtuin activation by taking more fuel. 
and you already maximize activation with low dose resveratrol. That's another counterintuitive secret that we have seen in episode 2. Higher dose resveratrol simply means a different effect, not more activation. A concrete example, let's say that you maximize the NMN benefits by taking 750 milligrams per day. Now you take resveratrol. You may now be able to maximize the benefits at 1000 milligrams of NMN, meaning 1 gram. This is because you have a larger fire to feed. The bottom line is this, regardless of how much NMN or NR you take, low dose resveratrol is best for longevity activation. I speak a lot about collagen in this channel. Collagen helps resveratrol action in two ways. One thing resveratrol does is increasing our cell resistance to stress. And when our cells try to respond to stress, in this case, perceived stress by low-dose resveratrol, our cells use an amino acid called L-proline as a fuel to survive under stress. And collagen is high in L-proline. So this is one synergy. Another is that resveratrol also activates our natural inner antioxidant defense system. This has nothing to do with its antioxidant property, by the way. For example, this study spoke about resveratrol and natural antioxidant defense system. This study is called Resveratrol Reduces Endothelial Oxidative Stress by Modulating the Gene Expression of Antioxidant Enzymes. Endothelial means the natural antioxidant defenses of our blood vessels. This is what they found, I'm quoting, This data suggests that the protective effect of resveratrol against oxidative injury are likely to be attributed to the upregulation of endogenous, meaning natural, inner, cellular antioxidant system rather than the direct reactive oxygen species scavenging activity of the compound. If you remember, in the previous episode, we have seen that resveratrol both activate the natural antioxidant defense system, but also with an antioxidant, which is a different impact. I continue to quote, Indeed, long-term, over 48 hours treatment of these blood vessel cells with resveratrol increases the activity of cellular antioxidant system, including superoxide dismutase, catalase, glutathione peroxidase, and the content of glutathione. So all these enzymes that they mentioned are part of the natural antioxidant system, and we know these increases longevity. One of these internal antioxidants that resveratrol increase is glutathione, and to make glutathione after the activation by resveratrol, our body needs amino acid called glycine. And collagen is the food with the highest levels of glycine on the planet. This suggests another synergy between collagen and resveratrol. Glycine, by the way, actually improves longevity on its own. So by integrating collagen into our lifestyle, or at least taking more glycine, we have a good chance to create a resveratrol synergy and make resveratrol more effective. So we covered collagen and glycine. Another amino acid that supports our natural antioxidant defense system is cysteine. The name of cysteine supplement is called NAC, N-acetylcysteine. Collagen doesn't have it. It's a different supplement. And similar to glycine, cysteine also helps the body to make glutathione. And this supports, potentially, the activity of resveratrol that tells the genes to make more glutathione, and then glycine and NAC supplying the building blocks to the genes to make this glutathione. It looks like a very good case for a synergetic effect, and in fact, it seems that glycine and NAC have a synergetic effect between the two of them. I'm quoting from this 2022 study. So this is what they did in the study. Evaluating the effect of supplementing of glycine and N-acetylcysteine versus placebo in mice, and compare that with the length of life and age-associated glutathione deficiency. Results show that mice receiving this glycine N-acetylcysteine supplementation live 24% longer than control mice. By correcting glutathione deficiency, oxidative stress, mitochondrial dysfunction, abnormalities in mitophagy, and nutrient sensing and genomic damage. All these are excellent for our longevity. So this synergy between those two building blocks for glutathione fits perfectly to our investigation's conclusion. This corroborates two things we discovered so far. First, it gives further corroboration that whenever we support the natural antioxidant defense system, we live longer. And this in contrast to taking external antioxidants, which can have a negative impact on our natural defense system. Also, this study gives further corroboration to the conclusion that combining the right nutrients and foods in a synergetic effect can enhance our longevity. Now, do I take glycine and N-acetylcysteine? I'm going to share that today. 
We spoke today about these supplements, but what about quercetin, phytidine, and terastilbin? I did want to put the synergy between them and resveratrol in this investigation, in this episode, but they deserve their own videos. You see, I tried to keep my videos short, between three to five hours. Resveratrol has another secret, which is it's a very cooperative molecule. It works with other polyphenols from plants, and together they target different longevity molecules, and therefore consuming resveratrol with other members of its family, the polyphenols, can activate additional longevity pathways that resveratrol alone cannot target. So we are changing our thinking. Instead of thinking about this lone supplement to target everything that we want, we try to think about creating combination of things that work together to make us live longer. And these foods and supplements potentially can create a synergetic effect with the resveratrol when we consume them together. Now we will transition into the practical part of today, with the habits you can implement immediately. And between you and me, it's difficult for everyone to stick with the habits that I give for health and longevity, even for me. It's a real pain. Knowing what to do is not enough. And because of that, I've arranged a deal with an app that specializes in exactly this problem. How to implement habits easily and how to stick to them months and even years after that. In that deal, you'll get the app plus a special bonus from me relating to my entire supplement routine. To try it yourself and see if it works for you, go to wellnessmessiah.com forward slash app. wellnessmessiah.com forward slash app. Before we get into the habits, please remember that none of these are medical advice, nor a personal advice, because everybody's body is a bit different, and they are not a cure for any disease. So now, let's take all the insight, translate that into practice. How can we use resveratrol supplement and other polyphenol supplements and foods to create a longevity lifestyle? In this practical section, I'll tell you what I do personally. Also, I'm going to show you labels of products with low-dose supplements and synergetic effect that we can buy right now. And I don't work with any supplement company. Integrating synergetic foods with our resveratrol supplement. By combining those foods into our lifestyle, we give a chance for resveratrol to be more effective in our bodies in order to live longer. We have seen today that resveratrol has a synergy with olive oil and olives. In total, we can say that combining diet that is high in olive oil with resveratrol supplement will reduce significantly the oxidized cholesterol carrier that is the major cause of disease that kills one in three people. In addition, we're going to gain further activation of sirtuin 2 together with sirtuin 1 activated by resveratrol. Those two are terrific for all longevity. We also have an assumed potential synergetic effect with avocado, with berries, and especially blueberries and blackberries, despite the lack of data. We also covered collagen, bone broth, a food, has some collagen inside, which suggests a potential synergetic effect with resveratrol. Should they all be consumed together at the same time? Not necessarily. Many of these are simply building blocks or polyphenols that are active in our bodies for many hours, sometimes half a day or a full day, so taking them together in the same day is sufficient to create a synergetic effect. What do I do? I take low-dose resveratrol in a meal with avocado or olive oil. That's usually the system for me. It will increase absorption and will provide polyphenols to have a synergetic effect with resveratrol. We also have potential synergetic effect also with green tea. It has a very potent synergetic effect that is being proven again and again in many studies. Regarding green tea, I have a tip for longevity that I discovered and implemented only in the last two years. I used to make a mistake prior to that. This study revealed my mistake. Let's read from the study. It's from 2019. It's called Comprehensive Investigation of the Effects of Brewing Conditions in Sample Preparation of Green Tea Infusions. The researchers checked the active ingredients in green tea based on simmering and brewing time. They found, I'm quoting, the quantification of eight catechins showed that the total catechin level peaked at 95 degrees Celsius brewing at 10 minutes. So what does it mean? It takes 10 minutes of simmering of green tea in hot water for the active ingredient catechins to be released into water, into your tea. These catechins are the exact ones that have a synergetic effect with resveratrol. 
So my mistake was not waiting for the green tea to release those catechins. I used to drink uh, green tea immediately after brewing. Now what I do, I brew green tea for 10 minutes in a bit of hot water and I only had the rest of the hot water 10 minutes afterwards, then I drink the green tea. Another good option is using a thermic cup, a takeaway cup, and this way I can just put the green tea in this cup and drink after 10 to 30 minutes of brewing. Why 30 minutes? Because the studies have shown that after 30 minutes, the level of catechins begin to go down. They begin to break down. We suggested maybe taking our resveratrol with red wine, as long as it's not sweetened, and the wine does not have less than 13% alcohol, suggesting maximum conversion from sugar to alcohol. How much red wine is good? Every 100 milliliters, as we said, has about 100 milligrams of polyphenols. That's more than enough, in my opinion. Alcohol doesn't bestow any longevity benefits. Personally, I'm against any glass over 200 milliliters. We're getting all the polyphenols that we need for that day. Therefore, I'm pro very low dose of red wine, together with a resveratrol supplement, either poured into red wine itself, or taking as a capsule with a meal. Which red wine should we buy? Maybe we should buy age wine, the expensive version. Interestingly enough, young red wine on age is better for longevity than aged red wine. This study mentioning that. The amount of polyphenols in wine decreases with prolonged storage due to the formation of insoluble polymers. This could also be attributed to some oxidation reaction. So this means the more the wine ages, the less polyphenols it has. And so the next time you get envy at the rich indulging on the most expensive red wine, they may be getting a tastier wine, but you will get the polyphenols and the longevity benefits. It's actually quite funny that it pays off to be cheap with our red wine. But what if we only want to get the polyphenols from red wine without any alcohol? Can we do that? Another good option is buying low-dose resveratrol supplement that has some synergy within the capsule itself. Some brands sell low-dose resveratrol with wine polyphenols, for example, without the alcohol, and other add some other polyphenols from other plants, such as green tea, into the capsules. For example, these are two labels of solid brands. I do not want to create the assumption that I recommend all the products of these brands. Just to show you an example of specific products that answer our requirement low dose with spiritual with a synergetic effect of other polyphenols. This product, for example, has only 50 milligrams of resveratrol per capsule. Please note that the amount that appears on the label actually comes in form of two capsules. It's half if you just take one and you get also synergetic effect of other polyphenols. This supplement has the same idea with 100 milligrams of resveratrol. It's, so you can choose whatever fits your situation. And they both cost around 12 bucks. And if you take them only three, four, five times per week, it's about three bucks a month. The following are supplements that can enhance low dose with virtual supplement. We have seen that NAD boosters such as NMN, NR, and niacin have a synergetic effect with resveratrol. They can provide sirtuins that resveratrol activates the fuel that they need. This makes sense from a synergetic effect and safety. This is exactly what Dr. David Sinclair does. And we have seen that collagen, glycine, and acetylcysteine supply building blocks to support the natural antioxidant defense. These two can form a synergetic effect both with one another and with resveratrol. These are building blocks, so we don't need to tie them with our supplementation of resveratrol. What do I do? Do I take these? I take collagen and NAC every day, not glycine. Why? Because collagen has more than enough glycine. And I actually add the NAC powder into my collagen powder, creating a synergetic effect that my tongue doesn't appreciate. I don't cycle these supplements, I take them every day. Another thing I like about collagen and acetylcysteine and glycine is that they don't activate mTOR. This is very good for longevity because many amino acids do activate mTOR and these are an exception. We get all the activation of the natural antioxidant defense system without overstimulating mTOR. This is good. The game of longevity is not just staying younger from the inside, but also staying alive. And there is no use in having a young body young liver, young heart, and young muscles when we have an aggressive tumor inside eating us from within. And over age 50, we need to be proactive about cancer. If you take a person at age 60 and compare that exact person to the time when they were 20, their cancer risk is 100 times larger. The same exact person, without smoking or anything else, 
has a hundred times higher risk for cancer. And we have seen in this investigation many, many studies showing that high dose resveratrol taken in consecutive days pushes cancer cells to die. Then you may ask, if I take most of the time low dose resveratrol, is there a benefit to integrating high dose resveratrol in a specific times, maybe to increase our protection against cancer? What I'm about to say here is not a medical recommendation, of course, nor a medical advice, and definitely it's not a cancer treatment. That's what I'm personally going to do with my body in good health. I'm only 35 now, and I'm already doing and implementing additional strategies that I share in this channel to protect my body from cancer. I don't need resveratrol to do that. However, if I were at age 50 or 60 or 70, statistically, my cancer risk is going up pretty dramatically. I actually view this high dose resveratrol protocol like a microchemotherapy. Therefore, if I were at the age of 50 or 60 or 70, every few months, I would take one to two grams of resveratrol for five to seven days consecutively. I wanna go really high dose, like I mentioned, but why? Well, different tissues in our bodies accumulate resveratrol in different concentrations. The highest tissue, by the way, is our colon, but we need resveratrol to be high in all tissues to force all types of cancer cells in all different tissues to die. If I were to take lower dose resveratrol, let's say 600 milligrams, I may get high dose resveratrol in the colon, but maybe not in the pancreas. Therefore, using high dose in the upper range for this purpose will make sure I'll get an anti-cancer effect within all possible tissues. After doing this protocol for five or seven days, forcing small cancer cells to die, then I could go back to my low dose resveratrol to preserve my youthfulness and for my body to stay young. Again, not a personal recommendation, not a medical advice, and not a cancer therapy, just what I would do. I hope you enjoy these ideas on how to create synergetic effect with your resveratrol supplement. Use these ideas to choose the habits that seem right for you and for your body. And because it's difficult to implement habits for everyone, I'm giving you the top app that specializes in this exact problem and a special bonus for me. In this app, you can find how to implement the habits easily and how to persist with them over the months and years ahead. Stick to the habits that you know are good for you. In that special deal with the app, you'll receive a bonus from me related to my supplement routine for free. Would you like to give it a try and see if it works for you? If so, go to wellnessmessiah.com forward slash app. The series on resveratrol dose investigation hasn't finished quite yet. When I discovered that in Dr. David Sinclair's own study, low resveratrol worked better for longevity than high dose resveratrol, the first thing that I was trying to do is getting Dr. David Sinclair's response. Did he answer to me? You're about to find out. In the last part of this resveratrol series, we're gonna try to answer the following questions. Why does Dr. David Sinclair take one gram even though in his studies, lower dose worked better for longevity than the higher doses? And why does Dr. David Sinclair take it every day, even though in his studies, taking time off resveratrol, cycling resveratrol, actually worked better? Also, is there a God? And what's the meaning of life? See you in the next video trying to explain why Dr. David Sinclair takes such a high dose of resveratrol in contradiction to his own studies. And until the next episode, remember, the correct data interpretation is everything.